this acquisition is a good chance for us to get this painting and educate um, people about it, make the nation feel that it's theirs and put the work that Constable saw as his best back in focus and on permanent view in the National Collection. We've partnered up with Cardiff, um, the National Museum of Wales, with Colchester and Ipswich Museums, with Salisbury Museum and with the National Gallery of Scotland in Edinburgh. So viewers across the country will get to enjoy this painting and it will be seen in different contexts. Um, so each venue will present this painting in a different context, one that's relevant for their audience. So it'll be slightly different everywhere it goes. And at the end of it all, we hope to get a fuller understanding of this work, how it might be read, how it can be used, and a fuller understanding of Constable. I've been working at Tate Britain for exactly a year now, and I remember in my first week, my boss sort of gathering me into a, a close conversation and saying that as a piece of confidential information that we were going to try and apply for this painting. Um, and I, I thought it would never happen. You know, it seemed we had an uphill struggle, um, but it's been, it's been an incredible experience. I've been part of a, a large team that put together an application, first of all, for the funding, worked with all of the partners to decide exactly how we would make the programme and finally make the bid for the painting. There's a huge funding application involved for many different sections, many different departments here at Tate and also at the partners. And then there was one incredibly nerve-wracking moment. Um, we had a breakfast with the Heritage Lottery Foundation trustees at the National Gallery in front of this painting. And that was our moment to put everything that we believed in on paper in person and make the pitch. Um, and they believed us and came up. It's a different side of Constable. We know the Hay Wayne, we know his Suffolk landscapes. This is not those, it's not a noontime idyll. This is a very stormy, quite disturbing scene in Salisbury and it's full of loaded messages and it's got great potential to reach out and there's quite a few pertinent themes that we think will connect with new audiences today. There's the tension between the sunlight and the showers and you've got that glittering rainbow coming out, but there's also tension at work in the representation of the scene between urban and the rural, between man and nature, and also between religion and politics. Um, before. Constable even put any paint on the canvas. He knew that this was going to be an important picture for him. This is a six foot canvas, and this was the format that he reserved for his finest compositions, those that he really wanted to make an impact in the incredibly competitive and crowded hang of the Royal Academy exhibitions. Above all, this was the work that Constable saw as his best. Um, it was the culmination of a long career of hard work, um, it was the work that his friend and his first biographer thought conveyed the fullest impression of the compassion of his art. Constable was much better received in France than he was in London. The French critics and French artists seemed to get him and understand his technique and his art much better than we in Britain did. And he once said that he'd much prefer to be a pauper in London than a rich man abroad. So I think now that we're finally coming to recognise him and he's got a chance in the spotlight, I think he'd probably be quite pleased with himself. Mm -hmm.